Okay, so here, this is where we left off. We were in Illustrator. I went to 13 colors. I think that's looking pretty good. Um, and then, so if we push expand next after we do the initial image trace using either the image trace panel or there's also the image trace um, button up here, but you have to push expand. Don't forget to push expand. That's kind of a two part process. Takes a little while for it to to finish but when it's done we can see all these blue lines if, you, if we do a command plus <clears throat> and zoom in on it you can see um, all the anchor points if we grab the direct selection tool it does bring in a white background so I'm going to delete that I just use my direct selection tool and I selected it like this if we if I zoom out and I bring it out here you can see what I'm talking about so if I delete that um, yeah that is pretty much the process I went through to get Clint so I might um, file, save this as, uh, we want to go into our images folder, which I'm already in there, Clint Clipped. I'm going to name it the same, but this isn't going to be in PNG. It's going to be, uh, maybe I'll make it an EPS just to make it a little bit smaller. Well, I'll save it as an AI, just so I have the original AI working file. And then I'll do a file, export, export as. And I'll do a PNG because they're smaller file size. Um, and the reason I, I ended up um, 300 DPI is good, transparent background, okay. And the reason I went into Photoshop first is because this still is a fairly low Im resolution image. So if I go to image, image size in Photoshop to look at this original image that I clipped, it's, it's 5 by 6 at 300 on my poster if I wanted to use him larger. Plus I also wanted to give him kind of a, a little bit of a hand-drawn or illustrated look. So Illustrator helped to kind of do that. Um, if we zoom in on him, you can see the difference that that makes. Um, you get these larger blocks of color, which are sort of interesting. So anyway, I'm going to use that new PNG in my file. So let's go into InDesign now. This is our poster canvas. I'm going to look kind of back at the other one just to see what I did. Oh, okay. I did clip out his head, so let's open him back up. Um, so what I can do is I can subtract out here, and then I can use my direct selection tool and just click and drag over things and delete. You, sometimes you have to push delete more than once with the direct selection tool, but you can also use your um, command plus to get in close. We can use the eraser tool as well and just erase along the neck. Um, it's one option as well to, to just use the eraser. So yeah, that's looking pretty good. I mean, it's not perfect. I think I did a little bit better job the first time when I, but I just for, for the sake of this demo, this is looking pretty good. Um, I would normally probably smooth this out more, but it's not looking bad. Um, so we'll just do a command S to save over that AI file, um, file export, and I'm going to re-export out that PNG um, and replace it. Make sure it's at 300. Actually, you know what? I might actually make this a little bit higher, 600. Oops. Um, just in case I want to really size them up. Uh, let's go into InDesign. So we're kind of going for this look. <clears throat> And then now I guess the, another the, another image that we might want to gather is this um, bicycle wheel. So if you go to Google Images, you can probably find something like this. I think this is what I ended up using. Um, it's, it's actually this one here. And then I think I even traced it with Illustrator, similar to um, what I did with Clint. And the reason why I traced it, I think, is because I don't think it was very big. I think it was a pretty small image. If I open it up in Photoshop, um, oops, did that work? Uh, sorry guys, I'll try again. It's raining outside. Um, okay, that doesn't work. It used to work if you clicked and dragged it over there, but I'll do a control click and then our command click. All right, never mind. I'll go into Photoshop do file open and then navigate to um, this folder that I know that this is in 
Oops, I went to the wrong one. Um, I think it's this one. So, um, image size. Actually, this is a pretty good size, but I think I traced it anyway in Illustrator because I wanted to, you know, have a flexibility of sizing it up without it getting pixelated. Um, but anyway, um, and I did clip it in between each of the spokes. So let's go into Illustrator. We'll do a file, new document. Um, this is fine as long as it's CMYK and high resolution. Uh, file, place, let's bring in that. Um, so I have to get back into that folder. Pretend like I'm just pulling this off the, off the web. So this is the PNG file that I pulled off the web. Let's do just, I might not use this panel over here. I might just do a straight up image trace. Just push the button. That didn't work. Command Z. Can't remember how I worked around this. Um, let's make it like, Okay, we'll let that go. I put it on nine colors. Um, I have it on color mode. I'm using the image trace panel, which I have to go to window um, and then image trace to get this to come up. It's just got a few more options. So that actually looks pretty good. So let's push expand. And so now it's all ra it's all uh, vectorized. We can start deleting out the um, white background that was brought in. And then, you know, obviously all the white areas in between spokes clean this all up i'm just clicking on the white and deleting with my keyboard um you know it might take a little while but you know, i just have to go through and okay and then if we move this whole thing you know it helps it might help to actually move it over here into this gray area and then we can clean it up uh, i'm just going to go ahead and do that so I went ahead and I, I cleaned this up pretty well. All the um, areas in between the spokes are no longer, they're all transparent. So I'm actually gonna save this out as an AI file because those are higher quality. Um, and then I'll also save out a PNG. So I'll go into that um, folder on my desktop for, put it in my images. Um, I'll say bike wheel AI, save that push OK. OK, and then we can do a file, um, export, export as, and we'll do a PNG file. If you have stuff on your or outside of your artboard, you can check this box and it'll make it just everything that's on your artboard and not the stuff on the outside. Um, so that's something that you might want to look into if you're getting weird files with extra things off to the side. You have, might have to check um, use artboards when exporting files. So now we have a PNG file, which is a nice smaller size, but it still has that transparent background. So we have basically, let's see, most of the elements we need. I mean, visually, we have the tire, we have Clint. The rest of this is text and just blocks of color. Um, let's see. Uh, this is just probably a JPEG file pulled on offline. I don't think I did anything to it. It's just a photo. So, you know, if we go to uh, our web browser and look at um, forest. I don't know why it took me there. I don't want to do that. Forest. Maybe I should look up pine forest and then look up images. Let's see if we can find, um, we'll go to tools, size, large, and just see if we can find some that might work. This one's actually pretty cool. It's different than the one that I used before, but I kind of like it. Um, so cl just clicking on this, like, Doing a file save apps from this sometimes doesn't work. It Sometimes it will give you actually a, a smaller version of the actual size. So you might actually have to do um, a control click or right click. Um, if you're on a Mac, it's a control click and then um, open image in a new tab and it'll actually be bigger in the new tab than it is right here. 
and then you can do a control click and then save image as and then I'm just going to navigate to that folder on my desktop where I'm saving everything for this Lincoln Peacemaker in my images. Um, maybe I'll just use the proper naming conventions. Um, and then there was another one that I saw that I kind of liked. Um, I think it was this one, actually. I kind of like that one. So um, I'll do the same thing. Control click on that open image in a new tab. It'll, it'll hopefully open it just all by itself, which is nice. Control click on that. Save image as. And hopefully, since we went in earlier, um, you know, I might just do Pine Forest 2. And it'll automatically normally just put that .jpg or PNG on the end um, of your file. So let's, so we got those two saved. Um, so we should be able to construct this thing now. Um, so one thing we can just grab the rectangle tool, drag, and then we can find a nice red color. I'm using a really bright red. Um, this is the outline of this box. I don't want there to be an outline, so I'm just going to click on that. You know, you can swap out colors here if you want, but I clicked on the stroke color and put, put it to none, apply none. I'm going to go back to the fill color, double click. And then we can kind of just go to like a really bright red color. I don't know if that's exactly the red I was using in this one, but I think it's pretty dang close. So, sorry, I was experimenting there. I'm going to take him out. Okay, so this is where we left off. So we'll do a file place to bring in Clint. Um, I'm going to bring in the PNG one. Um, and then I'm going to use this free transform tool to size him up. Push shift when you do that so that you preserve the proportions. Okay, so we got Clint in here. We'll do a file place and bring in that bike wheel next. Um, probably the PNG file like like before. It still has that transparency, which is nice. And then we're just going to bring that, you know, probably up in size. Um, get the free transform tool over here. It almost looks like a dotted border with like a triangle in it. So we're going to probably, that's probably big enough right there. And then um, push control or sorry, command to get to click through all the layers. Um, so if I want to click control one time, I got the bike control again and hold hold or it's command. Sorry, command. So hold command down and you can navigate through all the different things on your page. Um, when things start to get stacked up, it can get hard to select things. So just hold command down and click and you'll be able to kind of go through all the layers. And then I can go object, arrange, bring to front. Um, I think you can also go here and then bring to front here, but okay. So I got him layered on top and then I can also grab this rectangle tool, grab the ellipse, push shift to get a perfect circle, click and drag that out. And then we're going to kind of get like a nice, um, baby blue color. So maybe, I think maybe something like, like, like this maybe. Um, is close to the color that I used on the last poster. So I want to kind of bring this, um, so arrange, um, send backward, arrange, send backward, and that is looking pretty close to the original one that I made. I might have had a little bit more white in the blue, but close, very close. Um, Trying to think what else I could do. I guess I could draw this. I could bring in the picture of the forest really quick that we found. It's a little different than this one, but file. So we do a file place. Um, I'm not quite sure which one I want to use. So I guess I'll just pick one and go for it. Um, command minus. Grab this to size it down. The free transform tool. And then we'll just kind of bring it down to a decent side. I'm using command plus, command minus here to zoom in and zoom out. Use the direct selection tool to kind of, and we can push W so that we can kind of see what this is going to look like. Um, I want there to be that little white line there. I might actually bring this down and then bring it up. Oops. Well, I'm running out of time, so we'll continue on the next video.